turbocharging the butterfly pattern with trend strength. Hi, 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 how's everybody doing? My name is Ken W. Chow. I'm going to talk to you about trading a particular chart pattern called the butterfly. Here's a disclaimer. Let me tell you what trading is like once you understand a particular chart pattern. Trading is, is pretty much like solving a puzzle. That's how I see trading, okay? Now, we're going to talk about how to trade without any indicators. We're going to read price charts the easy way, okay? We're going to look at what a price chart is and see how that can be read the easy way. Trading profitably like you're playing a simplified version of Wheel of Fortune. It's like that show with Vanna White where and uh, it's almost like hangman, if you will. It's like pieces of a puzzle. Let me show you what that looks like. Now, if you were to ask what this, what this puzzle is, you cannot, you cannot um, guess what it is. But what if you were to, what if you were given a letter? If you were given a letter like this, then you can possibly take a guess at it, right? But you can still not not know what any, what anything it looks like, okay? What do you do? You wait for more clues to come in. As you wait for more clues to come in, things get closer and closer. Now, now you got three letters. What is this word? Now, if you were to take a wild guess at it, it will be very, very difficult, right? It could be protein. Were you guessing that word? How about this word? How, see, these are all guesses when you only have this many letters of the puzzle. But what if you were to wait until another letter comes in? Now you're getting closer, right? As you get closer, you can take a wild guess at it, but it can still be wild because were you guessing this word? You see, the the thing is that if you were at this level, at this point in time, what you want to do is, for this simple game, to see more clues before you take a stab at it. Again, this is a very simple game where you're not playing against anybody else. So what do you do? You wait until enough letters to come in, and then you take a stab at it, and therefore you know what the word is. Now, in trading, you don't need to guess prematurely. What you do is you get as many clues as possible to confirm before entering the market, okay? Trading a winning butterfly chart pattern is like waiting for almost all the pieces of a puzzle to be revealed. How do you like that, okay? Now, to me, the butterfly pattern is the most powerful, accurate, and reliable pattern to trade turns in the market. Why is that? Why is that? First of all, in this presentation, I'm going to answer a few questions. What is the butterfly pattern? Why does it work so well? And more importantly, how can we improve it even further? Okay? Let's ask this question. How is the butterfly pattern built? In fact, what is the building block of all chart patterns. Are you guys ready to see what it is? It is the measured move. It's a simple zigzag pattern. Now measured moves are like the letters used to solve that earlier simple word puzzle. Okay? It's like trying to solve those uh, puzzles, those, those uh, trying to figure out what the puzzle is by looking for more and more letters. That's what these measure moves are. So let's take a look at what a measure move is from my perspective. This is the measure move, A, B equals C, D. Again, I did not invent this. Uh, John Murphy talks about it in his book. In a measured move, this is what the standard equation is, right? So, the measure move is powerful to me because it shows us trend strength. It gives us the idea whether we should be leaning bullishly or bearishly. Do we have a bullish or bearish bias? 
Was the trend likely to continue or reverse? Okay. Let's let's see what how that is done. This is A B equals C D, right? That's what it said in terms of what the book says. In the real world, that doesn't really happen. Okay, I'm gonna get to that in a second. But I want you to pay attention to C. What is point C? Point C is a very, very important because it is the BC retracement against the AB up move. All right? Now, if you see that as AB equals CD, where's point A in relative to point C is very important. Okay? So if point C is, let's say, like this, point D would be where it should be, right? But what if point A is like this? Where should point D be to make this equation true? Over there, right? Does that make sense? Let's look at look at this another way because this is very important. This is what I call a deep retracement, the pullback from B to C. Point D should be right about there. If the pullback is what I call shallow, where should point D be? That's right, up there. Very simple. This is the measure move in action, or at least this is the variations of the measure move. Let's go bearishly. A, B is, is equal to C, D. If point it, and point C is very, very important. We want to see how deep or how shallow point C is. So if point C is shallow like this, point D ought to be over there. All right? So far, so good? Here's a deep retracing point C. Here's a shallow retracing point C. Where should the CD leg stretch out to make it equal to A, B? That's right, down there. So what we want to say is this. The rules to watching any measure move is point C. The deeper the retracement at point C, the weaker the trend strength. The shallower the retracement, the stronger the trend strength. Okay. Now what do I mean by shallow and deep? I like two-thirds or more to be deep. You can eyeball a two-thirds retracement and you can call that deep. Okay. Now here's the kicker. All chart patterns are constructed from many measure moves attached together. All right? I don't care if you're looking at a one-minute chart or a daily chart or a weekly chart. All chart patterns are constructed from many measure moves attached together. Now let's talk about the two configurations, the two ways these simple zigzags can attach uh, from one to another. Here's a measure move going up. And let's take a look at this last leg here. Now this last leg over here can be the start of another measure move. Right? Very simple. Nothing, nothing strange about that. And of course we want to kind of ask the question how deep and how shallow. Why do we keep on asking how deep and how shallow? We want to see how strong this uptrend is. Because if the uptrend is strong and the trend strength is intact, the trend should continue. If this uptrend is strong but getting weaker, you may be having a reversal at hand. All right? So we're reading trend strength as this thing makes its way up. Here's a downtrend, lower highs, lower lows. By the way, that's what exactly what a downtrend by definition is. Okay? And let's take a look at that blue leg. You have another leg coming behind. This is a downtrend, and you have a measure move, two measure moves attached as such. Let's take a look at a chart example. Here it is. I use a basic bar chart. Why? Because I'm going to show you a lot of different lines that I draw over, and I don't want too many colors to be there. All right? So by the way, this is the first measure move. Again, lower highs, lower lows. What follows is the second measure move. Very simple, all right? And you can look at the retracement in the first one, which is deeper than the, sh the retracement on the blue one. This means this downtrend is accelerating, all right? Okay, so to summarize, these are the two uh, measure moves, and we call these measure moves in a series, all right? Because it's one attached to another one, going up and going down. Very, very simple. Now let's talk about a second configuration. Again, a second way how these measure moves are attached to each other. Now this is the more interesting 
variation. Again, you start out with a measure move going up, right? And let's take a look at this leg here. This leg will be broken into, a lot of times, this blue pattern. This blue pattern is the measure move. The CD leg of the red one is broken down into a measure move A, B, C, D as shown. Okay. Now, this blue measure move is nested inside the red measure move. Okay. The, the red CD leg is broken down into yet another A, B, C, D pattern. Now, how is this configuration different than the previous one? Well, the blue point B is lower than the red point B. Okay. The blue pattern is nested within the red. This is known as a measure move within a measure move. Okay. The blue one is nested inside the big one. Now, if we are going to uh, look at this pattern and sort of rename it. By the way, blue D and red D are the same. Okay. But if we're going to get rid of the, the red pattern and just call it red B, focus on red B, if we're going to just call that X, what you have here is the bearish butterfly. This is nothing, what a butterfly is, is nothing more than a measure move within a measure move, and you have D up there to, to be shorted, okay? A measure move within a measure move pattern indicates a weaker trend strength configuration as compared to measure moves in a series. Because again, that blue point B cannot go beyond the red point B. And if the inner measure move has a deep point C, remember we talked about deep point C, then there's probably a butterfly forming. Okay? In a bullish butterfly, you have something that looks like this. You have a blue measure move nested within the red CD leg of the bigger uh, the mother uh, measure move, if you will, okay? And look at red point B. If red point B can be renamed to X, there's your bullish butterfly, a buy at D. Now, again, this is a way to trade, not in hindsight, not with lagging indicators, but as soon as price action drops below B, and if and when it drops below X, you know you're going to be in the butterfly zone that is in the making. You can use a limit order or I'll talk to you about several ways to get in, but that's where point D ought to be, all right? So a quick summary of measure moves working together, all right? Th these two patterns are what? Measure moves in a series. But if, it, if these two are in this type of configuration, you have a measure move within a measure move, all right? In a series, one after another, by the way, if this looks like a five-wave pattern, then that's a good coincidence. What I, I noticed that if you have measure moves in a series, you don't always get just five waves. You might get many more, all right? Going up, here are two measure moves in a series. Again, a stronger uptrend compared to this pattern, which is a measure move within a measure move. Okay, make sense? Let's take a look at some examples, just so you can see. This is, a, again, a bar chart here. I focus on this inner measure move most of the time. I say to myself, here is a measure move. It has somewhat of a deep retracement at its point C, okay? And this is a measure move within this measure move, all right? So let's go and ask this question as a review. Why? is the butterfly pattern so powerful for trading market turns? Why is it so good? Well, I just told you earlier, because it shows weakening trend strength in two ways. Two ways, okay? The first way is, again, the measure move within the measure move configuration. The second way is that you must have a deep retracement at the inner point C. I like it to be deep. How deep? about two-thirds, 66% or more, all right? It can be as deep as double bottom, yes. But we want that inner pattern to be deep. Now, you can Google 
uh, and look for the butterfly pattern. Uh, many people have their versions of it. Sometimes it's called the crab or the bat, but it essentially is a measure move within a measure move, a weakening chart pattern. Again, the inner one has a deep point C. Again, it works in all chart patterns and in all time frames and in all markets, I should say. So again, a little quick version here is the downward measure move is encapsulated within this measure move and point C ought to be what? Deep. Okay, this makes a better chart uh, pattern because you have a pull from the deep point C of the inner measure move. Okay, let's take a look at some chart examples. Do you guys see anything here? Well, here is the measure move within this measure move and that's pretty deep. I can eyeball that and say that's about two-thirds deep and there's your up move. All right. By the way, where's the target? The target should go above A. Blue point A should be the target if you were to buy it at D. Okay. It could go a lot higher as you'll see, but that's where the minimum target would be barring a slowing down of the winning move, if you will. Okay, here is an upward measure move. Now, if this is encapsulated within a larger red pattern, is this a butterfly short? Well, not really. We want that to be deep. That's a little safer to have that inner pattern deeper. Okay. Okay, let's talk about how to determine where the turn will likely be. Where's that turn going to be? We're going to use Fibonacci ratios. Fibonacci ratios are found in nature, all things natural. Okay, Fibonacci ratios work extremely well in trading. Now, I'm not going to get into all the different angles as to why Fibonacci ratios work, but let me say this. Because Fibonacci ratios are found in all things natural, I would say that a market, may, which consists of a lot of human beings expressing their fear and greed, and traders, if you will, that's an organic uh, situation, if you will, uh, organic uh, entity. And the price action of that entity will follow the Fibonacci ratios. Okay, so let's take a look at how we use that to determine where a turn ought to be. Well, let's talk about a, uh, a butterfly here. The first calculation is the XA range. We will take the XA range, extend that down 1.27. Now, you average that with the BC range. The BC range gets the 1.618 extension, extending down from C. Okay, and this will give you a move. All right, let's take a look at a chart example of something I traded uh, about a month, uh, a month and a half ago. Here's a crude oil, and you can see point C is a deep retracement. It is a measure move within a measure move. The XA range gets the 1.27, giving me a 46.52. The BC extension gets 46.53. And right about there is your entry, which is way above point A. Okay. So again, these are the two calculations in a standard butterfly pattern. How about here? First of all, you have to recognize a butterfly pattern, and then once you do that, you have the 1.27 of the extension, and the inner pattern gets the 1.618. It goes up from there. In a bearish situation, it's the same type of thing. The XA range, and you have this ABCD. XA gets the 1.27. The BC gets the 1.618, and somewhere in there, about the average, give or take, you will get a move down, and it should go down below A. If you have a deep point C, it should break below point A. Now, does it always do that? No. It would do that, I would say, the majority of the time. Here, about a couple of months back, is a pattern off of the gold chart. There's that inner pattern with a deep retracement, and together you have a short there at 63, 1163, 
down below 1150 is your exit, your target. Okay. Now, here is where it gets very, very interesting. How to improve a butterfly pattern even further for more accuracy and reliability. <laughs> I've talked to you about what the standard patterns are. Okay, what makes a good general setup for a butterfly. But let's talk about how to get those extra couple of letters, if you will, to get in on that uh, on that on that puzzle. So you can wait until you know more and more letters come in, if you will, before jumping in, right? Because after all, the butterfly is a quite a simple, easy to recognize chart pattern. But because it has so few moving parts, uh, the simplicity of it may cause some issues in terms of accuracy and reliability. So you want to add in some more stuff, if you will, so you can really uh, fine-tune the pattern. Okay. What we do is we're going to use overbought, oversold chart patterns, the more the better, at the reversal zone as confirmation. Okay use overbought, oversold patterns. So what does an overbought, oversold signal look like? <laughs> Again, we're looking at chart patterns. We're not looking at indicators or momentum oscillators or anything unusual. We're looking for simple chart patterns. Well, let's go back to the good old measured move once again. All right? Here's a measured move. A, B equals C, D. And let's say point C is deep, which is what we want. Okay? Now, this is what the book says, A, B equals C, D. In the real world, this is not always the case. Sometimes you have the C, D leg growing much bigger than A, B. C, D has run over and beyond uh, what A, B has suggested. This is an overbought pattern. Okay? This, is, this has gone too far. In other words, if you have that's overstretched CD coming off of a D point C, then you're in a very, very unstable area there. Now, going the other way, AB equals CD, point C is two-thirds D, maybe more, and you have, whoa, C to D is a little bigger than AB. It's overdone, oversold, if you will, and you're going to get a reaction. Make sense? With this knowledge, we can use these pattern, these little patterns to help confirm a butterfly even further. Okay, this is the first way to confirm a butterfly. <clears throat> so the first way to confirm a butterfly is to look for additional supporting overbought oversold measure moves extending into the preliminary butterfly reversal zone. So you have a preliminary reversal zone using that 1.27, 1.618 extensions, okay? Now, as it's coming into that zone, it's like looking for the last couple of letters of that puzzle. Do I have overbought, oversold patterns that would help out the cause, okay? Let's see how that looks like. First, in diagram form, and I'm going to show you some charts, the actual charts, and some actual trades that I've taken. Here's the butterfly pattern, okay? Right? Now, look at that CD leg, for example. This CD leg is coming in, if you will, dropping, in this case, into the buy zone. What you want is that CD leg to be broken down into yet another measure move, in this case, shown in purple, an oversold pattern where its CD is bigger than AB, right? So with this pattern coming in, this has a better chance of it reversing. In other words, you're adding one more piece of the puzzle. This works in all time interval charts. This is the one-minute chart. I'm just showing you this because I traded this one. And let's take a look at that. What is in that pattern? Now, that, that's a butterfly pattern as far as I'm concerned. And with this, let me zoom in a little closer. All right. This is the preliminary measure, uh, I mean, um, butterfly pattern. Point C is extremely deep. Okay. Being a one-minute pattern, you can see how the ticks are just, you know, on the right-hand side is like three, four ticks. If I've written, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very small pattern. That's what I'm saying. Here are the extensions, okay? Now, if you got in at 
uh, 47.22, oh, it overshot you. But being a small pattern, it only overshot you by six cents, okay? And by the way, this ABCD pattern, you can already see the CD leg being a little bigger than AB. I always want that. I want it to be a little bit bigger, the CD leg to be a little bit more stretched. But here's the kicker right here. What is that? That is yet another pattern. Again, the CD leg gets broken down into yet another pattern shown in purple. This one also has the CD leg stretched out further than AB. This helps the cause. This helps this thing uh, stays honest, if you will. Okay. So if you did get in here, took a little bit of heat, and look what happens. On its way up, I'll, I'm going to pull it back. This thing popped, what, 70, 60, 70 cents? You took six cents of heat, but this thing went all the way up. By the way, as it, as it was moving up from D, can you see more shallows than deeps on its way up? This is how it blew past A for more profits. If you made only half of this, you'll still be in very good shape in terms of uh, risk to reward ratio. Okay, again, there's a one minute chart. Can you guys recognize anything here? Well, there's your butterfly. The CD leg here is already bigger than AB. With something like this, I'm just salivating at a short above X. The question is how much higher over X, okay? Here are the calculations here. And there is a so-called supporting structure. By the way, this purple pattern, look at this little point C. I did not uh, label this, but this point C is a, not the deepest, if you will, okay? So then overshot it a little bit. But look, there's another one. This one's a little deeper coming off of that low. These two purple patterns are two measure moves in a series, if you will. And this one is, in other words, you have two uh, supporting purple patterns coming into the zone. It keeps that zone honest. And if you got in at, let's say, 50.95, you took a little bit of heat. But listen, this thing has gone, it's going down below A. Okay, how far below A is it going to go? Let me pull it back and see. Whoa, this thing has a pretty big move because it's mostly shallow shallows off of the high of D. Again, trend strength tells you that the trend is strong. This thing should keep motoring. Does that make sense? All right. Again, the purple pattern that I put here is that supporting structure. All right, more examples. There's the butterfly pattern, again, it's point C is deep, giving me that inner pattern 1.618. But again, I want to point out this purple pattern here. It is a supporting structure. It is overdone, overstretched, if you will. Down you go. Anything here? It looks like a mess here, but you know what? Here's the two calculations. There's a purple pattern with a deep retracing. And then there's another one. There's actually a couple of more, but I'm not going to overbore you with that. But, you know, the more of these purple patterns, the better. These are called supporting structures. Look how big of a move this thing gave you. It's the same chart, but I, I'm going to pull it back here. Okay? Huge move. This was brought to you by the FOMC back in March on that Wednesday, but the move going up was already in place. By the time the news hit at 11, 11 o'clock Pacific time in California, that is, because that move was already on its way up. Okay, so that was, that was the first way to confirm a butterfly pattern. Let's talk about a second way to confirm a pattern. Okay, what do you do? Well, if you have a butterfly pattern setting up on a somewhat big chart, meaning 60 minute or a daily chart, you have the luxury to zoom in using smaller time interval charts to look for the reversal, to confirm the reversal, okay? Again, if you're down to the one minute chart, then just play it straight up, but because you can't split it, split it any lower. But if you have a larger pattern, zoom in, okay? I vary my time interval charts just to see whether a, a, a butterfly would show up on a big chart, 15, 30 minute chart, or a small chart, five minute chart, or a huge chart, daily chart, okay? Here's that cotton chart again, 60-minute chart. Here are the two calculations on the 60-minute chart, but as it's dropping into 
the zone. The zone is, let's call it 59.92. Should I be buying it? It's a huge pattern. If it drops below you, you might be taking a lot of heat. Where should you put your stop? Well, th those questions can be kind of scary, but because it's a 60 minute chart, as it's coming in, meaning dropping below X, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Zoom in meaning from a 60 minute chart, let me convert this to a 15 minute chart. And by the way, before I do that, let me show you there's a purple pattern here to help out, okay? Two purple patterns, all right? So that's good. So let me zoom in. 15 minute chart. This is what it looks like coming in, coming into that 5992 zone. As it's dropping, you say to yourself, wow, this is dropping. I don't know what to do with it. Let me go down to the five minute chart. What are you looking for here? You're looking for confirmation that that zone is going to give you a reversal. You can see something here already on the five minute chart. On the one minute chart, there you can see it bottoming out, actually lower than where you uh, have pre-calculated, overshadowed by a little bit, but then you see higher lows, higher highs, okay? That in itself, by definition, is an attempt to go higher. So let's say you got in at 60.12 or 60.60 or even 60.16 uh, or 60.20. 60 you say, wow, that's 60.20. That's not close to the low. But because it's made some motion to the upside, you can put a stop loss below the low, say 59.83, 82, right? So would it make sense to buy that, say, let's call it 60.20? Yeah, I'm giving up all the move already. Well, you do have confirmation that this thing has gone lower highs, lower lows, dropping to higher lows, higher highs, shown in red, okay? So if you were to buy it at 60.20, let me zoom out and see if this was still a good bet. 60.20 is right about there, okay? Where's your target? 61.60, you see that? Above A. That's your target, above A. So... By getting in at 6020, you still have over a dollar forty to go, and you risk only forty cents. Let me zoom out even further. This thing has actually gone down, gone up about oh four dollars, all right, four hundred ticks, way above point A. Okay, so again, this is the reversal based on confirmation, purple patterns, and also zooming in. Going back to the one minute chart. You might as well just take it on the fly because I'm not going to zoom in any closer than the one minute chart here. Okay, so you can just take the heat, which is only six cents. Again, this is an earlier chart that gave you a big move, relatively speaking, to the amount risk. All right. So again, to summarize, there are two ways to confirm. Again, we're talking about confirming what you already have as the uh, butterfly. You want to look for overbought, oversold patterns. I've shown that in purple. And you want to zoom in closer where the rubber hits the road as it's coming closer and closer to the zone. Why? Because if you want to catch it on the fly, meaning a primary entry, you can use a limit order and adjust it a little lower or a little higher or you can look for secondary entries, as I call it, once you zoom in closer to a smaller chart pattern and let the market tip its hand to show that it does want to reverse, okay? Then I'm just going to throw in some more chart examples since you, you guys have that. Anything here on the five-minute chart? This was back in late March. Uh, five-minute charts of gold, right there. Can you guys see? And there's a little purple pattern to boot. Okay, so that was a good little butterfly. How about the one-minute chart? Again, okay, I traded these patterns. Any Anything jump out at you? There's one over there. Okay, and now that one shows two measure moves within the big mommy measure move. But the second one is really the purple pattern, right? Anything else? There's a large one right there. There's a deep measure move within the measure move. And again, that sideways choppy chop chop between 10 o'clock and, say, 10.20 is a good sign that it doesn't want to go down anymore from that zone. And again, it popped above point A, uh, 48.45, okay? 
<clears throat> now you might say, well, you're showing me the one minute chart, Ken. How do I know this thing works? Well, here's the daily chart. How do you know you was going to work on the larger charts? This is a daily chart. Going back to November, this was this chart was done in uh, early April. Okay, as this thing was dropping fast, how, how do I know it was dropping fast? Shallow retracements. As it dropped, it popped a little bit in December. Retracements were very shallow to the upside, and it's very eager to go down to new lows. All right, but then in February and March, it decided to consolidate, and let me zoom in a little closer to see the consolidation. Here it is. What do we see here? Well, we see a butterfly. This is a, this is a double top butterfly. And here are the two calculations. By the way, being a huge daily chart, this, the average of these two uh, was off by six cents. Six cents, okay? The average of these two numbers gave you the long. Again, you don't need to buy it on the fly. You can look at other smaller charts to go long after that area got hit. Again, where's the uh, target? Around 56, 57, right? Above that high, okay? What has happened since early April? Oh, by the way, deep retracement on a purple pattern to help out the cause, right? You want that in. If without that, it might be a little more tricky. Here's the today, here's today's chart. Notice how it went above point A, which is 57, by quite a bit. So again, let me go back to the previous chart. On this drop, this pullback seen right here, this is a good area to anticipate along because you are looking at a pullback with the target, with the promised land around 56, 57 still out there. All right? That's where it needs to play out before it's happy. So again, this is a good, I like the butterfly because it gives you a lot of risk to reward uh, ratio. And on, on a larger chart like this, since the middle of March, it had actually bottomed out. In the mid 40s, now it's up to low 60s. I'm sure you guys can tell based on what's happened to the prices you're paying at the pumps, right? Since middle of March, okay? Now, let's talk about different variations. <clears throat> this is what's important. I'm just going to touch upon this, and I'm going to finish up and ask, uh, see if you guys have any questions. Variations and unconventional or ugly butterfly patterns, right? But here is a perfect butterfly pattern. You guys, um, you know, may get used to it by now, okay? Why? It is a measure move within the measure move, and the inner measure move is deep, okay? Of course, you need that supporting purple pattern. Now, the supporting purple pattern supports this butterfly. This overbought purple pattern can look like this. It can only look like this. This is also valid, okay? In other words, you have a lot of choppy, chop, chop before you go above X. How about here? No, this is not a confirmation. You cannot use the purple pattern as confirmation, technically, because it has gone above X. In other words, the fact that it's gone above X could that be the butterfly that is dropping and is played out already? So the purple pattern cannot be above X. Again, the two components that needs to be there will be D point C and the measure move within the measure move. Okay? Yes, this is this is being recorded, by the way. Yes. Okay. How about this? Is this still a legitimate butterfly? Yes, it is. This is still a butterfly, technically speaking. You do have a D point C in blue. And its CD leg is way overbought, right? This is still a legitimate butterfly. How about this? Double top at X and at B. That's still good. B hasn't gone above X. How about here? Double bottom at A and C. Still a good butterfly. In other words, it's 161, 127 calculations are still valid thanks to the purple pattern. Okay. How about here? Is this a butterfly pattern? No, it is not. This is not a butterfly pattern. Why not? Because point C, shown in blue, is not deep enough. You don't want to fight this strong uptrend coming off of A. How about this? If point B is higher than X, and you have a purple shallow point C and a shallow blue point C, 
this is as good as a breakout trade. Okay? Because you're showing a lot of trend strength. B was able to jam above X. C is shallow. And more C's are more shallow. This is, you don't want to fight this uptrend. Okay? This got so ugly that it's no longer a butterfly. Now let's take a look at some trades that I took this week. This is the crude oil. Well, there's one right there. You guys can see that. Uh, you can you're going to recognize that after a while. Let me uh, label it for you. Now I'm going to take a close-up look and zoom in. I'm zooming in using a one-minute chart here. The previous one was a five-minute chart. Notice that point C, the CD leg, broken down to this purple pattern. A very, very good con confirming uh, extension okay, into the zone. Again, this thing worked its way above A on this one-minute chart. What else? Well, this is this morning. Just this morning on the E-mini S&P, this is the 15-minute chart. Anything good that you guys see around here? Let's zoom in on that area right there, okay? Now, this is a 5-minute chart. Zoomed in from a 15-minute chart. What do we have here? I'm looking at the open at 6.30, 6.30 Los Angeles time. Well, there's a deep point C there, and shown in blue, there's the X. The mo moment it gets above X, you may have a butterfly pattern. But wait, how about supporting structure? Does the CD leg show any slowing down into the zone that I want to short? Because I'm going to fight this uptrend, if you will. It's been working its way up pre-market on this five-minute chart. Well, let's take a look at the CD leg. What do we see there? Oh, there's a good purple pattern, pretty deep, stretched out CD. It's purple CD is very, very stretched out. But wait, there's more. There's a double bottom also stretched out CD. And the purple pattern, look at this one. This guy's CD leg is way stretched. It is also a deep retracement. And by the way, this purple pattern is a measure move within this previous one, again, it's not in a series. It's within the previous one. What does that mean? That means by the time it gets above X, it's very, very unstable. Now, if I would have put in the calculations, look, guess what? It shortchanged me, right? It shortchanged me. It didn't. If I had my orders in at, say, 94 even, I would not be filled. I would miss it by two ticks. What do you do? Well, you could either... Uh, you know, adjust it a little lower, or on this five-minute chart, you can convert this to a one-minute chart, and here's a one-minute chart, okay? What you do is you can, you can chase it a little bit. Once it starts rolling over, if you will, and it goes down, what I say, bar to bar. In other words, bar to bar meaning it just keep on going below C, below A. You're not talking about any measure move, any hiccups, okay? You can get in on a secondary entry, let's say, like, 2091 okay so these are the good stuff that can help the purple pattern okay so the conclusion butterflies form at the majority of tops and bottoms I would say over half of highs and lows have the butterflies in them now unconventional butterflies work well when we have confirmation when we use confirmation again the more of those purple confirming patterns the better okay to to help out the cause if you will Actually, there are a lot of things that you can you, you want to know before you really can trade a butterfly. You want to learn how to stalk a butterfly. How does it unfold? You want to apply confirmation for safety. We did a little bit of that. And it's more important as to when not to trade butterflies, in what location, and when you should trade butterflies. How to enter orders. I didn't get a chance to talk about that. Initial stops and targets. I talked about uh, initial targets how to manage the trade, whether it will make it to the target. Secondary entries, I talked about that when you zoom in. Now, you can also trade butterflies without fibs, okay? How to handle back-to-back -back butterflies, okay? And my personal secret is the day trading uh, the, the S&P and mostly the crude oil, okay? Now, if you want to learn all of this, I have a 10-week butterfly course available, okay? It's once a week for 10 weeks. Okay, now this 10-week butterfly course starts 
You can either start May 18th, which is a Monday at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. East Coast time, or you can come and start the Saturday June class. I'll take both. Okay. But once you sign up, you can take the class over again. Now I, ha I have it staggered like this because uh, some people not, might want to take a weeknight class. Some people want to take it on a Saturday morning. Okay. This is a very comprehensive, advanced butterfly course, and the tuition is nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. Okay. But I'm also going to throw in a couple of free bonuses. I wrote a couple of I wrote an ebook and a video companion to the ebook called Superstructure Trading. I use a lot of the principles in this book to uh, explain the butterfly and to reinforce a butterfly. Okay, the ebook and video companion set sells for ninety-seven dollars. Okay, you can buy that still online, but it's yours free with enrollment today. Okay, but I have a special offer for you guys because you guys are agents. Uh, you know, recommendations, I will give a 50% off. What that means is your tuition is only $498.50 with this early bird discount code. Early bird being a week and a half early, I guess. Okay, this is the discount code. Again, for 10 weeks, and you can take it twice. And, and the way I teach is with all these slides and chart examples, and you can ask questions once a week we have these classes and you can ask your questions at every single class okay so to get started go to www.ptausa.com hover the mouse over enrollment and use the discount code or you can call Frank directly okay and here's what it looks like when you go to PTA USA under the enrollment there you can look for my course the advanced butterfly course and again use this early bird discount code okay now if you have any questions you can email me or call me directly I'm here most mornings trading sometimes I uh, need to talk short because I'm on on, the, on top of the market but this is something that is very very powerful once you understand it okay again the 10 week butterfly course starts either Monday a week and a half from now or next month and it runs 10 consecutive weeks all right so again give me a call if you have any questions and again use the discount code here I'm gonna take some questions here that is the end of my presentation Herman has a question uh, okay Herman asked me, uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk on, give me an email or we can talk on the phone about that, okay? Um, how do you know where the CD leg of the purple pattern will extend to? That is, what, well, here's what we do. We look at the C, we look, we, there are several ways to do that. We'll cover that in the course. we we'll cover that in the course. The CD leg will extend into the zone. And that zone will be uh, the 127, 1.618. Okay, there are some other extensions that you can use that's shown in the book to 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 kind of give you more stuff to average in. Okay, but it is basically the 127, 1.618. There's another version as well. There's another version that can extend into that zone. That that's, that can be given another zone, okay, depending on the the location of it. But generally speaking, if you if you have a big big pattern there, the difference of getting in or getting out could be quite a bit. You would zoom in. If it's a small pattern, I would just take a stab at it because a little bit of heat is worth it. All right. Any other questions? Uh, this is a, after 10 weeks, do I have all of Yes, you do. Eric asks, after 10 weeks, after 10 weeks, you have a, a lot of knowledge and then some, okay? A lot of knowledge and then some. Uh, because this is a very simple pattern, but it's just a lot of the confirmation leg, a lot of the purple pattern and the location 
and other things as to how to how to manage the trade. So yes, you will have all the information and then some. Okay. Yes, uh, email me, uh, Vic, if you guys want the uh, recorded version. All right. I'm going to stop recording here.